Episode 54 of Multiplaying is brought to you by the Catalina Wine Mixer. Fucking Catalina Wine Mixer. It's the fucking Catalina Wine Mixer. It's the fucking Catalina Wine Mixer. Everybody online, looking good. A companion podcast to the collaborative blog and gaming community that's playing as life allows. This is Multiplaying. Well, let's start the insanity. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Hello? Great heavens! What kind of radio show is this? And this is Multiplaying. Tonight on the show we have Jason. Hello. What you drinking, Jason? Uh, right now I'm just drinking water. Cool. Just water. Awesome! Yeah. I might get some later, but All right. everyone in my house is sick. Yeah. Uh, Dean? I'm, uh... Hey! Hey. <laughs> what you drinking? I'm drinking... I'm drinking the hard stuff. I'm drinking the McLove Ultra again. That's All what right. I had. Yeah. Wow. And uh, this is Steve, just rocking the Mountain Dew. Uh, let's go over. It's been a while. It's been at least two, three weeks now. The holidays are behind us. It is 2011. It's uh, the future. So it is the future. Uh, so we're going to get into it. I'm sure we all have gotten uh, some new additions to our libraries over the past few weeks. <laughs> uh, let's go with J- Jason, what you've been playing. Okay, hold on one second. I gotta get out my my list. It's a big <laughs> stack of paper you got yeah. there. Uh, hmm. Okay, Do my I go al- tome alphabetically or no, um... <laughs> uh, okay. God, I don't even know where to start. Um, yeah. First, I'll go with I'm gonna little explanation of some of these things is uh, like the 22nd or something. A couple days before Christmas, I went to watch a, a Blu-ray movie. On my PS3 and turn it on, and the thing was dead. Yep. What? Yeah, I got the yellow light, whatever, of death that they. Same thing I got, yep. Oh, no. All the kids talk about, and I. I, <laughs> all I tried... the kids talking about their hula hoops yeah. and their yellow lights of death. <laughs> and their Morgan Freeman. <laughs> so, and uh, I tried some of the, the. I didn't go as extreme as you did, Steve, of busting it open. I just tried some of the minor fixes that people suggested. Yeah. And then I called in, and they offered me, you know, the whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I haven't sent it in yet. So this is, I luckily, I just got the th- new 360 not too long ago. So most of these things I got for Christmas were for the 360. So, like, thank God. Um, so <laughs> Bonus. Some of what I've been playing on 360 was um, I actually got back into Dead Rising K-Zero, which I had never played the original Dead Rising past the demo. Um, but this one was five bucks, and I was really hearing some crazy shit about Dead Rising 2, so I wanted to try K Zero. Um, I made my way through that, and uh, actually then went, ran to GameStop and bought Dead Rising 2. Have any of you ever tried it? K Zero? Any, any Dead Rising? The first one I have. What did you okay. think of it? I, f- I love zombies, but I fucking hated Dead Rising. I hated that game too. Um, at least the demo. Uh, case actually, like, real quick interjection. I, in case anybody doesn't know that follows doesn't follow me on Twitter or whatever, but I did get a 360 for Christmas. So, Woohoo! Yay me! Um, but with that, I can actually. You mean your uh, kids got one? <laughs> oh yes. Supposedly my kids got a 360 with the Connect, and uh, but yeah, I've been playing the shit out of that. But uh, I did actually because I saw that you were playing K Zero. I downloaded it and tried it out, and you hated it. I fucking hated it. Yeah, um, I, you know I can't. I can't. I I won't even try to persuade someone differently. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what it is. The first I, hour or so, I hated that game too. I I will say there is something in the game that I can see why people would like it. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was real hard. I mean, this is I kind I got over it very quickly, but like right off the bat. Like, my wife was sitting there watching with me. Like, kids went to bed. I fired it up, and I was playing it, and my wife was watching it with me. And, like, right off the bat, I had personally a very hard time with it Mm -hmm. because of the situation that you have a little girl. Oh, I know. That's brutal. I wouldn't let Shannon watch me play that. Yeah, well, that and the fact that, like, as soon as they're looking as a little girl, you have to give her um, the Zombrax to keep her from turning into a zombie. Oh. And the like one of the first things she says is, "Daddy, I don't like shots." <laughs> <laughs> and like as a as a father of a daughter who is diabetic, it's, it was like, 
<laughs> that's not gonna work. And my wife kind of like looked up at me, and I was like, "Uh." <laughs> I was that's like, yeah, that's, that's pretty bad. But no, I can, I like, I can see where most people wouldn't get that attachment to it. But then, like, moving past that, I was like, okay, I can look past that. And then I continued to play through the game, and I was like, I never got this. Like, okay, I see what people see in this. I, I guess I can see what why people would like it, but I was just bored with it. Yeah, yeah it, it took a while for me to get into it. But I'm, you know, just thinking, you, I thought you, maybe you'd like it as practice because if there's a zombie outbreak, you may have to go out and get some shit. <laughs> that's true you have to get shit done no um <laughs> the, when when i think the most important thing that i because i had actually got that game before like long before i traded in this other 360 so probably when it came out and i had just played it briefly and i kind of was like yeah this is this sucks whatever and but then when i went to go play it but i got you know more interest in some of the 360 stuff i had with the newer one and once i had heard a little bit more people talk about it and i kind of knew what to expect that it's one of those games that you can't get through the first time. No, because you because you're going to be too weak. That yeah. you're expected to restart it, and it even tells you whenever you save, like the X button, you know, hit X to restart the story. So mm-hmm. I did that a few times, got up to like level three before I started it for the last time. And once you, I got into where you combine the weapons. That's where I was having the most fun, which. I think it was new to Dead Rising 2. I don't believe it was in Dead Rising 1. No, it wasn't. Or, or, yeah, and that was a lot of fun. Um, and I, I think I like that idea, but like the whole time, and I, maybe that was my problem, was that I didn't give it that chance to let me start it over and continue to grow upon the character because I could see, the, like, okay, I can see, like, combining all these weapons and just trying the crazy shit would be cool, but I never really got to the point. I'm, like, running around looking for stuff and, like, okay, what what would make sense? And I kind of, like, started treating it as, like, an adventure game, like a fucking Telltale uh, Telltale game. Like, okay, what items do I need to grab that would make sense to put together? And I just never got to that point. I just oh, was, you know, I, I, I know what you're saying. I, I used a fac. And that totally helped me. I yeah, I, I, I needed the guidance because otherwise it's pretty vague. I can hmm. see maybe going. I might try it again um, with some assistance with that because like I'm grabbing propane tanks and it's like I, I got to the point where I couldn't find anything to put with these things. And I'm like, okay, I'll just beat the shit out of them with the propane tank. I don't know. <laughs> well, as you level, you open up combo cards which give you the specific recipe. Okay, and that is actually. You can experiment with things and make and find the recipe, but it will tell you it's not going to be as effective, and you won't be able to use its special move until you find the combo card. Yeah. So it kind of, I don't even really try to, unless something really jumps out to me as a unique combination, I don't even try to experiment. I just wait until I get the combo card, because you get a special move, but it also makes it much more durable than anything you would pick up yeah. or make without the combo card. Because I was like grabbing things, taking them to the bench, I'm like, nope. Nope, nope. And then finally, yeah. I was like, "Oh look, a fucking chainsaw! Great." I'll just, <laughs> just the best, the, the easiest, the easiest one right in the beginning there is a uh, just a two by four and nails. Yeah, I, yeah, that was the only one I had. And then it like it uh, disintegrated on me, and I was like, "Uh, propane tank." Yeah, if you find the combo card, some of them, some of them are really weird. Like I think a bucket and nails, like what? just yeah, you can put it in there, and all it does is you shove it on the zombie, and it it basically hurts their head, and they're standing there like, you know, it doesn't kill them. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, right. just humiliates them. It's comedic relief. <laughs> just thing. humiliates them. A hat, uh-huh. hat, hat and beer makes a beer hat, which gives you health regen, and you nice. wear it as you go around. One, and one of the, you know, and that game's just so ridiculous, and Dead Rising 2 is just kind of an extension of it, but one of the, the moments that I was playing that game where I just realized how awesome it was to me personally was you, you see all this shit that you can pick up, and it's all really weird. And I was in the store, and there was a deck of cards, and I'm like, well, shit, I wonder, wonder like, what this will do. Like, will this make them slip or something? And I ran out, and a zombie came at me, and I just started chucking cards at him, and he just, like, stopped, paused for a second, just bat him away like a minor nuisance, and then just <laughs> kept coming at me like, no, no, these don't do anything. Just the fact that they put that shit in the game. I kind of did the same thing in the uh, Case Zero thing with just the box of nails. I didn't have any 2 by 4 Yeah. You, like, run out with just the box, and you're sitting there, like, chucking nails by it's hand. It's got to do like, something. <laughs> it's just, like, they're just sticking in them. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. So, I don't know. I've, I'm I've been, I'm in Dead Rising 2 probably a couple hours, and I just restarted it. The cool thing is your levels carry over from Dead mm-hmm. uh, Case Zero to Dead Rising oh, nice. 2. And also has... 
online co-op. But I don't know. That's definitely, like I said, a game that I am really, really enjoying, but not anything I would recommend someone buy. <laughs> Cause... But, but with K uh, zero, you can at least there's a, you can at least try to do the trial, right? Yeah, you can you can download the trial, and uh, yeah. you definitely get a taste of, for what it is. In yeah, that. I definitely got to feel it because I didn't buy it or anything. I just did the trial, and that's. Yeah, that's enough to say whether you're probably going to like that or not. And Case Zero's five bucks. And oh I've, yeah, yeah, it's super. I've cheap. heard a lot of people say they played Case Zero, enjoyed it, but then they really didn't feel like they needed Dead Rising Two. So I mean, I guess if you really want a Dead Rising Two fix, get that, and that five bucks may get you through. Yep. Well, cool. What else have you been playing? Um, other than that, I picked up Dark Siders for yes. the first Yeah. So did I. And we God. all three did. God, yes. I, I love that game. That game it is, is fantastic. so <laughs> good. And Zelda clone, whatever you want to call it, I am enjoying it more than any Zelda I have in recent memory. Yeah, really? Like, yeah. And, yeah, I and the last, I think I told you or somebody else online, the last Zelda game that I enjoyed was A Link to the Past. What? Yes, I have not liked a Zelda game since A Link to the Past. Yeah, I haven't. I, I've played every... 3D Zelda game, and I've probably quit after maybe I, eight or I, nine hours. Like, wow! I hated all the N64 ones. I don't know what it was. I just <laughs> didn't like them at all. I, I, Sacrilege! I, I, <laughs> I know. Like, so, whoever's listening is just pissed right now. Yeah. I, know. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, Link to the Past was the only, like, the last one that I can say. But I'm also a person that really liked uh, the Adventure of Link. So, on the NES. Oh, the yeah, side scroller. Yeah, the side scroller one. I like that. But uh, yeah, I just Darksiders is fucking phenomenal. And but I didn't like I had hear I had heard everybody say that make that uh, connection between it and Zelda. I didn't get that for a while until I went to that. I don't even know what the hell it's called. Uh, until you go to that big castle that has the big bat creature in it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's not laid out like a traditional Zelda no, game. No, once the beginning. you go, once you go there is when I finally go. Okay, now I understand why people are making that like link because it really, really felt that way. But um, how far are you in the game? I am. I think I'm in the temple, whatever you want to call it. After that, okay. So I'm not. I'm not too far. I've you know dividing all my time up between these games. But mm -hmm. yeah, like up until that castle point, it's almost just like a God of War game. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a lot more fighting than it is anything else. And then you really get that. Okay, go get this key. Okay, go walk around to this. It becomes a little bit more of a uh, an item to solve puzzles sort of game. Yeah, and one of the most surprising things to me is the story and writing and voice acting in that game is, is pretty that Mark good. Hamill? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Is that what now? Mark. The Hamill. guy that's the uh, the watcher that's with you is Mark Hamill. It, seriously, I had yeah. no idea. That yeah. guy that's like hanging on you. Yeah, why, no, he sounds, I... why he sounds like the Joker, the cartoon joke. Because <laughs> that's Mark I look too. like an idiot for not even noticing that. That's awesome. I didn't even know that. Yeah. I, I heard it one time. I was like, eh. And then he popped up a second time. As I told my wife, I was like, oh, that's fucking Mark Hamill. She's like, yeah. who's Mark Hamill? I was like, God damn it, woman. I, I actually, twi <laughs> actually twittered that question when I thought it. Like five people within a minute responded, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, what do you think yeah. of the combat, Jason? I love it. It's it got it's really really tight and the way you can switch up weapons and the different uh things that you're getting uh, the combat is the thing that jumps out to me personally is the thing that I think is just blows Zelda out of the water. Yeah. And it's very thing, different compared to Zelda. It feels like it got a war game to a certain degree, but it's not as mashy. Yeah. There was that one, there was the part that it really really clicked to me. Do you guys remember when you were I think on your way to that castle with the bat, and you're jumping mm -hmm. across the highway that's broken up. Yes, yeah, that, that big one, motherfucker. That big motherfucker comes at you, and it took me forever before I finally realized, like, oh, I need to block, and and you need to stick and move. You, you mm -hmm. know, I I didn't. I tried doing that, but I oh shit. Actually, it ended up working for me. Was blocking when he attacked, and I kicked the shit out of him. Really? Okay. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, I it's guess not. It's not an easy there. game. No, it's tough. Yeah, it gets actually. It's <clears throat> the cool thing about the combat system that I found is that it it's pretty it's pretty versatile in that you can you can get as complex as you want or you can get as butt mashy as you want. So, you know, if you're somebody who likes to do a bunch of different moves, you have the ability to do that. Or if you're somebody like me who just kind of like you know likes Diablo in a action based 
RPG, you can put all your points into doing just very simple moves with um, the Soul Blade and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So that's um, awesome. Yeah. I just lost my fucking yeah. train of thought. And, and they're making a sequel to that game. They right? are? Yep. They better. They, I gotta say, just I, I beat this actually just the other day, and um, while it's a very short ending, it is satisfying and has a very interesting twist. So... It, when they have a sequel, I cannot wait for the sequel. Actually, after seeing that, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I think it's, it's not going to be out until sometime crazy, like 2012 or 2013, even they said. But they're making it. Oh. Vigil must not be a huge team, I would think. But and I'm what glad else that have they made. I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure. But I think I've, I've heard their name before. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I'm glad that game sold well enough that they're mm-hmm. able to do that. They also made Warhammer. They are making oh shit oh the MMO that's they're right. making that's, the Warhammer I've heard 40k it. <laughs> MMO <laughs> wow so yeah. maybe they, maybe they don't have a small team but maybe a small team working on Dark Siders right cool but I don't know I'm I'm really looking forward to it. how long did that game take you Dean uh, it took roughly <clears throat> roughly sixteen hours and hmm. it's 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 not a short game because I don't I don't think when you die it actually counts that stuff. And toward the end, I actually died a lot. The thing about Dark Side is, is that the, the mini-bosses themselves are often much, much more difficult than the main bosses. Because the main bosses always have a gimmick, you know? Yeah. And the, the I don't know, I just had a difficult time actually beating some of the mini-bosses. So uh, you will probably die a lot, and that will add to the time. So I'd say a good solid 20 hours for this game. It's not short at all. Well, I believe that, because that one on the bridge is the one I've had the most trouble with so far. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Parts. Yeah. I probably died five or six times going up against that thing, about me. through the controller at the TV. Me too. I had to take a break. <laughs> I took a break, then came back, and like, oh, I'm going to try blocking here, because I forgot that I can block. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so, other, yeah. other than that, um, I've been playing some Bad Company 2 Vietnam mm-hmm. expansion. Yes. Which, God, that is that is really, really good, too. It's awesome. Yeah, the, fantastic just, value. Fifteen bucks for that expansion is awesome. And and I like the just the nice variation of the maps. There's a lot of them that it seems streamlined to where you don't have to run so far for the fight, but it still feels like a battlefield game. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah, and I'll say that a couple of the maps seem almost better suited to the conquest mode, and a couple of the other ones really uh, just work so well in the rush mode. Yeah, like the Hastings works pretty well in the Rush. Yes. Hastings is amazing on Rush. Mm-hmm. Um, I have not tried that one on Conquest yet, but the uh, like the Hill uh, 147 or whatever it is, the uh, the Hamburger Hill yeah. is Rush, but it's fucking hard if you're American. Yeah. Which it's kind of supposed to be. Yeah. But uh, that, no, that game's really, really good. That game's... Uh, I don't know if they've optimized it or I just hadn't played the in a while. It runs so much smoother and looks better. Yeah. Vietnam now. looks really, really good. Yeah. Jason, are you playing the multiplayer with uh, voice chat? Just random question. Um, I don't know if it's turned on or not, but I'm on PC and no, no one's talking. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it, you don't have a bunch. Okay. Just because I, I actually bought it when it was on sale from EA for like 20 bucks, I don't know, several months ago. And uh, I haven't really... I haven't got through the single-player campaign, but I really wanted to try the multiplayer. But the thing that turns me off about these games is that they always have the voice chat and a bunch of the, you know, lead assholes who like to Dudes. be dicks. Well, what yeah. we could do is we could, all, we could all play turn off voice chat and just get in Skype or Vent. Yeah. I would be open. I suck at Battlefield so bad, but I bought this game. And me too. <laughs> me too. I, I want to try it. Yeah, I want to try the multiplayer. But My kill-death ratio is terrible. I'm playing the medic because <laughs> I suck at that, but I'm still having fun. Oh, medic's are really good. Mm-hmm. It's, well, uh, medics are fun as hell on Battlefield. Yeah, so we should definitely do that. If you, yeah, yeah. If, whether you have Vietnam or not, we. Could, I mean, there's still plenty of people playing the. The great thing about the Battlefield game was, you know, how they. Did you guys hear about how the Hastings map was going to open up to people when they unlock so many kills, mm-hmm. like on each platform? And PC got it real quick. And then, like, a week or so later, 360 and PS3 weren't there yet, so they just said, we're going to unlock them for you as a, like, Christmas, holiday, New Year gift. Yeah. So, That's I mean, it's, awesome. it's, it's cool to see a PC game. Nothing against consoles, but, you know, a game that has... Especially still... a shooter with, like, everything on the consoles saying, ooh, Call of Duty, ooh. Yeah. Um, still playing some uh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. I got that for Christmas. Yes! Yeah, that's really, really fun. 
It doesn't. Um, oh god, that's so good. But it's I I personally have so much more fun as the police. Me too. I, Me too. I gotta say, I mean, it's I've did some of the uh, the racer side stuff, and I personally have not done any of the multiplayer yet. Have you? No, just the auto log stuff. I haven't done any real multiplayer. See, I know John wanted to talk about that tonight because he's been playing a lot of that multiplayer, um, and he's just since like seriously addicted to that, and he's having a hell of a lot of fun. But yeah, maybe uh, next week we can get his word on that. But uh, sounds like it's good stuff, and I, I'm interested to check it out. But I'm not sure how much more I'm going to actually play the single player or not. But I will say the uh, ev- everything that I heard from other podcasts and read on sites was absolutely true about the auto log thing. That is a huge motivator. Now, why do you say you're, you're not sure how much more you'll play? Because I don't know, I'm getting to this point where I've I've unlocked most of the cars and stuff. Oh, okay. And what what's confusing to me is that I've unlocked a lot, at least on the police side, not so much the racer side, but um, on the police side I've unlocked, except for on the exotic side, maybe the exotics maybe only three or four left, but I've there's still like eight, like what ten or eleven ranks to go, and it's like, Jesus, how much more stuff is there gonna be? Hmm. I don't know. I don't. I I I don't know. That stuff's kind of confusing in it, but they seem to unlock so much stuff for you up front, and it's I I don't see how it's gonna. I mean, I can see it definitely getting more intense towards the end, but I don't. Know. I'm gonna keep playing it though for now, and then mm. once I maybe once I try the uh, multiplayer, I'll probably forget about the single player. You know, one thing just real quick. When I think of Hot Pursuit, I think of this when you said that one of the games that you're gonna rebuy for 360 is Blur, and I think I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Yeah, because I That's think the the population on 360 is much higher than PS3. And you can get the game pretty cheap now. Yeah, you can probably get it for like 20 bucks now. Yeah. I think I saw it on sale for like 10 just the other day, actually. God oh, damn sure. it, Dean, you didn't tell us. Well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, I a, it, if I see it, I'll let you know. <laughs> there's a lot of shit. I mean, that's what's funny is about me now getting the 360 is that What's weird is that, like, and we'll get more into this more in next week's show because we're going to be going about, like, what we're looking forward to in 2011, but in 2011, as far as what I know I'm looking forward to, most of it's on either the PC or the PS3, but now that I have this Xbox, I can go back and buy all these cheaper games. Like, I want to go back and buy Bayonetta, I want to go back and buy Fable 2, um, shit like that that I, I had never really had the chance to play. I could have played... Bayonet on the PS3, but I heard that that was horrible. Yeah. So I just avoided it. So now, but now I can go do that. So. And what's nice about the 360 is that the games, they they seem to have the tendency to lose value faster than PS3. So you know if you're buying them late, they're usually way cheaper. Well, yeah. yeah I mean, I've seen Bayonetta and Fable 3 for like 10 bucks recently. Yeah. That's well, crazy. Fable 3 for 10 bucks. Or, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not <laughs> Fable 3. Uh, Fable 2. Oh, okay. That's a yeah, good that's, game. Just buy yeah. it. <laughs> Did you end up getting uh, Force 3 yet? No, I have not. Uh, there was a guy at work that was going to give me his copy, but he can't find it. So. Oh, what a dick. I know. <laughs> I got that. I got that. I haven't I haven't actually played it yet. I got it used just really cheap it was when I was going to do some trade-ins. The, uh, I mean, it was a packing game, so I imagine, yeah, you could probably get it super cheap. Yeah, yeah. So I just wonder what your thoughts would be. So. I'm curious about it, but my, my one caveat like whenever i do play it the big caveat that i'll have for it is that i've been playing gran turismo 5 with a wheel and i know I, that's the big I difference don't, i don't plan on going and buying a wheel for forza well i tried even looking for one i can't find a 361 really there was an official microsoft one i think when forza 2 came out but it's out of print or out oh, of wow. manufacture they, yeah out huh. of print <laughs> yeah, guy you with, know what i guy with a fedora and this big real printer. Ah, I got these wheels out. Ah. <laughs> so, um, I, ac- I actually, because uh, of the PS3 went out and I was kind of barreling as my next big game was to, to be, was going to be Red Dead, I went and uh, traded it and bought it used for 360. <laughs> so you started I, over? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, You're never going to finish that game. <laughs> Were I you know. in Mexico? Yeah, I was. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Are you even in Mexico again? No, no, I'm not even oh, Jesus I'm, still, I'm, still at Bonnie, I'm still at Bonnie McFarland's ranch. Oh my god. <laughs> dude, seriously, do we just need to tell you what happens? No, I'm gonna beat it. 
No, it's, you know, listen to all these end-of-the-year podcasts where some were spoiling Red Dead. I had to, like, mute it and, like, no, no, I, I want to see I, this. I want to see this I epic know, ending that people are calling, you know, one of the best ever. Because you, you uh, I know that, like like myself, you listen to the Giant Bomb cast yes, a lot. Yeah. And, like, they started talking about it. I'm like, oh, God, oh, God, I probably need to tell Jason to not fucking listen to that. No, I, I, I was able to mute it, and I skipped forward, like, ten minutes and then started listening again. So. They don't totally spoil it, but they really hint at it. So, yeah, yeah. it's probably best that you skip that. I have a, I'm going to beat that game. I don't care. So I started playing that again. Um, but also, I got I picked up Back to the Future, uh, the Telltale game. Oh so, yeah, yeah. Well, hey, well, you guys get that? I did not uh, yet. What what platform is it on? Or currently, yeah. Uh, PC. PC. Okay. Yeah, I think it's coming to PS3. I don't think it's coming to 360, or they haven't announced it. But uh, so that's you, really the, really good. It's just the first episode, right? Yeah, first episode, and then the next episode comes out. I think next month, February. Oh, okay. And there's five total. Um, nice. Thing. So, f- thoughts on the first episode? Yeah, it's definitely. it's awesome. It picks up a year after uh, three, mm-hmm. and uh, it it, it the the writing's great. The guy who who we've talked about before with Marty continues mm-hmm. to be awesome. He sounds more like Marty than than Christopher Lloyd sounds as Doc Brown. Wow. Because mm. you definitely can hear he's old. Dude's old. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's really really good. Uh, just a quick premise, you know, it's 1986, and one of the cool things that I was like, oh shit, this is awesome, when it 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 uh, it it's pans into Marty's room and he's sleeping, kind of like in the first one, and they, he's yeah. got like a weird science poster up on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I was like, it's awesome. Um, and Doc's missing, so they're the bank's foreclosing on his house, so you're trying to find out where he is, and then a DeLorean shows up, and it it ties into it explains kind of what happened between three and now and why that's <laughs> happening and it's really really good and some of the things I'm almost to the end but some of the things that they hint at where the story's going has me really excited for the next one cool um, wow. cool. so I definitely I definitely think if you're really really in a back future it's 25 bucks I don't think they're selling the episode individually but 25 bucks will get you all of them that's oh really like, definitely worth a look I think might wait towards uh, when the next one comes, and then I might just drop and get two episodes in one. So yeah, that way you're not sitting there waiting because I that's usually it's not that big of a wait between episode one and two for Telltale games. It's usually you know one month, one month. This here it was two months. I think just to hmm. get out before Christmas. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, but definitely really good. Awesome. Uh, you got anything else? Um, other stuff, yeah, but uh, that's, that's I've talked about enough. <laughs> <laughs> we play so much shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dean, what you been playing? Oh. <sighs> so I've been playing a lot of crap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I finished Darksiders. We already talked about that. Game mm-hmm. is great. If you're a Zelda fan, like Ocarina of Time, you should probably pick that game up. It's like and 10 maybe minutes. even if you didn't. Even if you didn't like Zelda Ocarina <laughs> of Time, you should pick it up anyway. Zelda toot. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um... I've been playing so many games, it's it's crazy. Um, I actually picked up the DLC for Costume Quest called Grubbins on Ice. And I oh, I got how... that too. Yes! It's awesome. I That's love it. It's, good. it's more Costume Quest. And, and what's cool about what they did is that the, the whole formula of Costume Quest is basically you go around, you trick-or-treat, you get candy, you fight monsters, and then you rinse and repeat that for the whole game. And it's fun because it's charming and all that stuff, but... They mixed it up enough, and they actually changed the the design, so you're not doing the same thing that you were doing in the main game. You're actually, like, climbing a mountain up to the to the top, and hmm. uh, and, and you're not in the neighborhood. You're actually in the in the land where the monsters are from and stuff. So it was actually uh, it was actually really fun. It was like uh, what five bucks, and uh, yeah, I think about three to four hours of content, and really. For five bucks, I guess some people could complain, I'm sure, but I had a great time, and it just makes me want more Costume Quest DLC. So, did you actually play through it, Jason? I'm probably about halfway through. Like everything I've been playing, I'm a bit <laughs> dividing my time. <laughs> but uh, it's it's really good, and I don't think you can pl- you can can't complain about that time dollar ratio when no. you know you you may spend sixty bucks for a shooter that's eight hours long. Yeah, no, it's it's quality stuff. I. I loved it. It just, yeah, it makes me want to see what else they're going to do because it's obvious that Costume Quest itself isn't just, 
you know, isn't just focused directly on Halloween and that they can actually do some other stuff. It's a it's a weird fiction and a weird world that they've created. I mean, I'm surprised there's not been a like Valentine's Day one. Well, the the thing about Grubbins on, Grubbins on Ice, it's not it's not a Christmas. No, they thing. never say they never say Christmas. Yeah, it, it, but it, the thing about it, it's not even clo- it's not even there's there's no ties to Christmas in that entire DLC at all. It just happened to come out in winter, and you it, the whole game it starts out like in a desert area. Basically, you're at the bottom mm-hmm. of this mountain in a in a valley or something, and you know, it's totally dry and arid, and then you just you climb up this mountain doing quests, getting candy, of course, fighting monsters and things like that. Then you finally get to the peak, which happens to have snow on it. So it, it's it's not even holiday centric. It just mm-hmm, right. yeah, it's so I, I'd be surprised if they came out with the Valentine's Day one, but it it just it makes me I don't know it makes me really interested to see what else they're gonna do because obviously they're not just okay. trying to go for holidays. Gotcha. Yeah, really interesting stuff. Um. I also had the opportunity to play through Limbo. I know Jason talked about that months ago and how how kind of disturbing that game was. Yeah, that game's fucked up. The game's messed up, and, and I don't want to really talk about it. I mean, it's kind of a cool platformer, very cool art style, very very weird uh, very weird environment. I don't know. I just fuck that game, though. I didn't like it. It, it ended. I, I yeah. think it's overrated. I, I I I hear a lot of people keep putting on their top, you know, one to five game of the year. I don't see that at all. It was okay. It was. It it was it was okay. It wasn't like this amazing experience and I'm like, oh yeah, this this is life changing. You know, it's it's a cool kind of vignetted grain filtered, you know, black and white piece of platforming. But Dean, they did more with less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's art, man. It's no. like my clothes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. No, it's like it's... my car. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I see people. Yeah, I see people talking about it like, oh, it's, yeah, it's one of the best XBLA games, and it's one of the best games of 2010. It's no, no, it's not really. I guess it's, you know, it's I've... like it's like sex I give women. <laughs> <laughs> I totally don't get that, but okay. I, I, I do. He's doing more with less. I do more. Ah! <laughs> yeah. So, but but seriously, fuck Limbo. I mean, if you like it, that's great. But no, <laughs> just <laughs> no. Um, the you're only gonna, the... you're gonna make Blameful Gecko very very mad. Oh. Uh, the same. But no, I agree. I mean, it's okay. But yeah. Yeah. It's, don't, it's... don't make it more than it is. I agree completely. So it was made a bunch with by a bunch of Europeans and eh, it's artsy and whatever. Fuck it. So um, the other thing that I've been playing, <laughs> the other thing that I've actually been playing, and what's what's funny is I think that we were talking about this on uh, a Lost episode um, last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys were totally talking about Cataclysm and the awesome starter areas, the Oregon starter area and the Goblin starter starter area. Yep. And so so I went out a couple of days after that and I broke down and I bought Lich King and I bought Cataclysm and I resub to WoW because I really wanted to experience experience those new areas. Um because you were just saying the the just the instancing or what is it what do they call it? The phasing. 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 Yeah. yeah, the phasing and the storytelling was awesome and, and really um I have not been disappointed. I rolled a uh Worgen Hunter and I actually went through the work and starter area and I was completely impressed with the stuff that they're trying to do. It really did feel um, kind of on rails and very single player focused. Yeah. But as an introduction to World of Warcraft, I can't right. imagine a better I can't imagine a better introduction than what they've actually done. With the variety of quests where you know you're you you get to bomb stuff with siege weapons, uh I, amongst all the other type of quests where you go kill 10 of whatever it's just it's so mixed up and the story is so focused and it moves along so quickly that you can really it really just grabs your attention and you just you just feel really engaged in playing that game so I actually played through the Worgen starter area I loved it got spit out in Darnassus which I hated but then I went and moved over to uh, is it Darkshore is that right? Yeah Darkshire is it Darkshire? I don't know. It's it's I don't the 
I, I don't know. It's the it's the night elf starting area, but they completely redid the entire area, and so the quests are streamlined. They're coherent. Um, they tell they tell an actual story, and they actually make you care about what's happening in the world. So that's not something that was present in the old World of Warcraft, and I was totally impressed by this. And then and then finally, um, on Twitter, Scary Booster and um, D River Ribs, they were talking about. Um, uh, a guild that they had started on Asglor, a horde guild, so everybody kind of just jumped over there and started playing over there. So I had the opportunity mm-hmm. to start a goblin and actually go through that starting area as well, which really displayed the same sort of variety and quests, a lot of the different phasing um, things that were going on. It was so fun. I've actually made it up to level 25 in that game, and I've, I, I haven't i have unsubbed. I think I'm going to continue playing, um, just playing casually here and there. The quests are just... It's hard to explain how much better they actually made it. They actually right. they made so many different stories. Like they actually made storylines and and I don't know about you guys, but I I always had a hard time following it because it's they they would, you know, you go into a quest area and then you'd see like 4000 exclamation points in the air. Right. It seems you, they seem to hub everything together a little bit better this time with the uh new setup. Yeah, like, like you'll, they put like a group of quests right here and then they move you down, okay? Here's this quest, and they portray this part of the storyline, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so it's 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 super fun. It's super awesome. If anybody needs, or if anybody wants to play on Asglore, I'm fairly sure the guild is open. No so Horde, Asglore, Latency, Low Lifes, uh, I, I am to Den on there, T-E-H-D-E-N. If anybody wants to play or join us, you're more than welcome to. I don't play very much, so I probably won't play with you, but... <laughs> Yeah, I, feel, <laughs> I feel kind of bad because I was actually really digging it. I think I got to twenty, maybe 25, 26 on my uh, uh, Tarn Paladin on there, and like, but I and I was actually I, I was enjoying the game rather well. Then boom, uh, holidays hit. And I got my new hotness <laughs> and just totally forgot about it. And just, I feel really because I'm like, man, I should play some WoW. But I was like, but I'm playing Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. So. And I haven't been focusing on WoW at all because I've just been, you know, been focused on the consoles, the Darksiders, and you know everything right. else. I mean, it's just it's with the refinements that they've made, it's it's so much easier to play casually. I don't know in my head or whatever. So whatever, don't feel bad. It's fine. Yeah. It's just World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah, it was a two month time card that I had sitting in my desk for months. So. It's still it's still gonna be there when you go back. Yeah, that's not, <laughs> never going away. It's not like the world's gonna change or anything. Come on, it's not like oh. it's gonna go out of business. Yeah, it's like it's not like you're gonna have another cataclysm. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much what I have been playing. Other than that, I just uh, I just after I beat Darksiders yesterday, it was the final bo- boss battle. I actually saved that for an entire day because I knew I was gonna die a bunch. I actually got home from work. Packed it in, decided I'm like, okay, I'm going to beat this boss. I'm going to do it, beat him the first time. So <laughs> I had a ton of time, and I'm like, well, what am I going to play? So then I restarted Mass Effect 2, about an hour and 20 minutes into that. Hopefully I'm not going to get addicted to the planet scanning again and forget about, <laughs> and forget about See, the rest of the game. That's such a weird thing to get addicted to. <laughs> no, no I, totally, I totally agree with him, though. I, everybody beats up that part of the game. I don't know why. I fucking love that. You know why? I I know why though. Actually, now that I think about it, I know why I like that part. Because why? in some small stupid way, at least for me, I don't know about Dean, but at least some small stupid way, that part of the game reminds me of Star Control Two. Oh, it that's true. I love okay. some Star Control Two. Just being able to go down and get all the fucking ore and stuff from the planets, yeah. and then take that that in a small little way that reminds me of Star Control Two. That a I fucking love weird it. looking alien pops up. In the little picture. Yeah, the, the Spotnik or whatever the hell yeah. it was. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I remember I remember that game um, when I went to the Babbage's at the mall when I was a kid. <laughs> and uh, I was looking at the Sega Genesis games, and that one was, like, on sale for, like, five or ten bucks. What? And I, like, my, I asked the person why, and they said, we have to get rid of it because so many people are returning it because it's too hard. What? So I, I ended up getting it for, like, five bucks. Wow. It was a you know, I, like pretty new game. I still got it sitting right here with the uh, 3DO. Jesus Christ, you have... Uh, uh, you just mention an obscure game and suddenly Steve comes up with a picture <laughs> on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, hold on, Mia! 
<laughs> Let me uh, find it. Yeah, it's right here. I could take a picture right now and send it. But no, we don't want it. <laughs> But yeah, I was I was completely but basically my entire January of 2010 because I got that game when it first came out. My entire January of 2010 involved starting the uh, starting the uh, uh, oh, the loyalty missions and then f- discovering planet scanning and getting resources. I would come home and just like sit there and scan planets the entire time, <laughs> and I'm like, this is pathetic. Why am I doing this? Like <laughs> you're sitting there like scanning planets, eating a sandwich. Yeah, pretty much. No, dead serious. That's like, what my, oh, it was sad. You actually feel like an interplanetary miner of some sort. But, it was um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and it's like this. Like, all over the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> There's like this weird, like, excitement when you see a spike of, like, on two yeah. lines. Two lines go up. <laughs> Ooh! Well, it's on the 360. The controller starts vibrating, and so that you, and so you have oh, to. Oh, okay. Thumbs happening. Thumbs yeah, happening. you're like, and then you have to like refine it just a little bit, and then finally you get the, you know, finally you get the sweet spot. Yeah, you get the sweet spot, and then you get the stuff, and then you can upgrade your shit. But uh, but I just it, they finally came out with the update that actually kind of made that a little bit better, so that people like me who. I don't know, who are crazy addicted to that. It, it doesn't take as much time. So, And that's what eventually made me stop playing the game, just because I couldn't couldn't do it anymore. So I, uh, hopefully I'll, I'll finally get through it. It's a, it's a great game. And yeah. Is there any DLC that you guys recommend for that, by the way? Um, I've, I haven't played any. I'm waiting <laughs> until uh, close to Mass Effect uh, 3. But I've, everyone is pretty unanimous that Shadow of the... Uh, well, shit, no. Layer of the, Layer of the Shadow Breaker is incredible. All right. I was thinking about picking some of that up because I'm d- dedicated to getting this bastard finish because that game is great. So. Because they haven't come out with an, an an actual release date for three, as far as I know. No. I I, okay. I I wait a minute. I think they have. Did they? What? Oh yeah. Wasn't it? Isn't it eleven? Yeah. It's one it's, eleven or eleven eleven eleven. Yeah. It's it's fall. I know that yeah. fall winter. Probably a month or two before that actually hits, I'll pick up the DLC and run through that, and then that'll get me pumped. Yeah, all right, I got I got 11 months to beat this thing. Yeah, you, <laughs> you can do it. There's a, you can, That's pretty there's hot. A lot, there's a lot of planets, but you can get through those. Planets. <laughs> I'm just gonna I, I'm gonna need like a planet scanning support group. I just whew, can you? I guess I get you can get through it without you. You got through it without scanning any planets, right? So who one of you did? No, I right? scan some. I scan some planets, but not. A ton. I scan the shit out of stuff. Damn it! No, I scan some plants, but not a lot. I think you do need some amount for some of the upgrades. There's some of the, isn't the rare materials, or maybe it's just some of the low end ones that. Yeah, I don't think you'd have to do a lot of it, but yeah, there's at least some that you kind of have to do. No, okay. I'm just gonna, uh, just gonna. I'll say focused. I'll do loyalty missions. I'll. <laughs> mm-hmm. the, okay. No, it's gonna be. It's gonna work out fine. You're gonna be great. <sighs> okay, I think I'm good. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'm gonna yeah. go scan some planets now, okay, guys? <laughs> uh, is that all you've been playing, Dean? Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, uh, I've been playing everything you guys have been playing, and all right, <laughs> we're done. Uh, I'll, I'll save the, probably the biggest addiction for last, but uh, right when I got the 360, first couple of things I bought, other than Darksiders, I picked up Splosion Man. And that's awesome, and my daughter thinks it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, so does my son. Yeah, she they're made of meat, and she yeah. likes to say. Uh, <laughs> what? And when, when, when you blow up the scientists in the oh, game, okay. like, meat comes out, and she goes, why? Well, she first, like, time she saw it, she's like, why is it doing that? And I go, well, honey, they're made of meat. <laughs> I didn't know how to explain it to yeah. her, like saying, uh, he's killing them. Uh, she goes, oh, okay. She like totally thought that was fine. And uh, that part, and then the uh, whenever he runs, when you're just running with him, and he goes, dur, 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 like makes some weird sound, she just starts busting up laughing and thinks it's the best thing. But yeah, that game is awesome. And for some odd, strange reason, reminds me of, uh, certain parts of the game remind me of Battletoads. I never played Battletoads. I don't know. There was just there were certain levels in Battletoads when it was all about explicit like timing of your jumps and stuff. Um, not all the way through the game because there was a lot of like beating up in the game, but uh, there's I just vaguely remember certain times in Battletoads where you had to have 
jumps timed and they, and you were going to basically if you didn't look at look at a strategy guide or something you were going to have to go through this thing like five six times before you got that timing down and that's what you have to do in explosion man a lot so is it um, as brutally difficult as i've heard it's pretty difficult to me so far there's not it's not really there are certain points where i do have to go back like go through a few times there has been some really really sticky spots but overall uh, most of the levels in the game, I think, flow really, really well, and you can just kind of get this rhythm going as to what you're supposed to be doing. But there are there are certain you are going to die in that game. You are going to go through a situation and then get killed and say, "Oh, I needed to go hit this thing," or "Oh, I needed to do this with this timing in mind." Yeah, it, so. it's fairly forgiving with the checkpoints, and it's oh, all. Yeah. It's also. It's, I don't think it's anywhere near as difficult as Super Meat Boy, something like that. And see, I got that game and I haven't played it yet. Really? Yeah. yeah um, that's, that's a great game. But I actually, somebody gifted that to me on Steam, and I don't have a pad for the computer. Well, you do now with the 360 controller. Well, I need to get a wireless thing. So oh, because can... you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe uh, some point in time I'll pick one of those up because I, I I started like playing it and he goes you need to play with this and I was like yeah it's probably the best idea yeah you do not want to play that game with a keyboard <laughs> so yeah I just <laughs> turned it right back off I was like yeah never mind um, but other than Explosion Man the next thing I picked up was Pac Man C E D X fuck mm-hmm. yeah that Pac-Man. is amazing that's a great game oh my god I have that's one that I go back to about at least once a day and try to up my high score on the, at least the five minute time mm-hmm. trial thing mm-hmm. oh my god that is great uh, what makes this what makes this so good I've been hearing so much about this what makes it different than Pac-Man like yeah you wouldn't think Pac-Man could get like better per se because it's pretty straightforward but to, and it's you, the best thing that you could do besides listening to like how I explain the game, best thing you could do without actually playing it is go look at a video, because okay. that will give you an idea of how awesome it is. But imagine Pac-Man, but not all of the dots are on the board, mm-hmm. and then okay, say you go over and there's not even a lot of ghosts on the board, and there's not even a lot of power-ups on the board. It's pretty. There's not a lot of things there to even grab. You go and you start picking up the dots. Once you t- uh, pick up all of the uh, dots on one half of the screen mm-hmm. it will spawn a fruit on the other side of the screen if you go over and you pick up the other dots on the other side of the screen the vice, vice versa thing will happen it'll spawn a fruit on the other side of the screen as soon as you touch get the fruit on one side of the screen it will spawn more dots on the opposite side of the screen it's really it's <laughs> fucking crazy well, it's I, basically this big back and forth movement that you have to make across and as you pass pass eh, excuse me as you pass ghosts that are hanging around every time you spawn more stuff on the opposite side of the screen it also spawns ghosts oh, as no. you pass them they start following you but it's like it's the, not yeah it's not like regular pac-man most of the time they're asleep on the board until yes, you pass them exactly there will be a few strays uh, yeah. strays that will go around in like random patterns some try to get you uh via other routes but um, if you do get close to running into a ghost, like if you're getting looking to get sandwiched into ghosts, it'll mm-hmm. actually go into like zoom in to the game a little bit on you and go slow mo so oh, you can nice. see how close bullet you are time. getting. Yeah, it's like <laughs> Pac Man fucking bullet time. And if you if there's no way out of the situation, you could possibly have a bomb that you could hit and it will actually explode all of the ghosts back to the middle point. Oh, sweet. And then after like two seconds, they'll come back out and start following you again. So when it's like you... an oh shit button. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. And then on top of that, like the the most like trippiest, best part of the game is like when you actually get like a shitload of ghosts following you. I think at one point it had like 90 some ghosts following <laughs> me. <laughs> what? Yeah. Because uh, they, yeah. they, once you, once you wake them from asleep, they just follow you. They don't veer a pattern. You're just basically leading them around. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then when you do get a power up, like you have all these ghosts falling, you do finally eat a power up, and they all go to like the uh, the negative look. Mm-hmm. You turn around and you go eat their asses. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah, and it's just like this bam, 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 bam. And like <laughs> you go straight through these, and you see all the points racking up, and it's just like this like, ecstasy of Pac-Man. Like <laughs> I, I did come in my pants one time. <laughs> <laughs> 
and then you get a dopamine rush in the brain. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's it's amazing, and it's so addictive because you. The only thing I don't like about the game, um, has this comment I'm kind of mimicking from like people on like Giant Bomb. The the leader, there's no like leaderboard. There's no like actual. There is a ranking. You when you do these different stages of the game, you get a rank. You you can see your score. Um, on your high score thing, but then you just basically see where you're ranked amongst everyone. Yeah, they should um, have like a friendly, like an auto, almost like an auto log thing. Yeah, if awesome. they had at least like an auto log, so you could see where you were with your friends on these events, that would be amazing. I, I, I the 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 ranking that's already there is great for everyone, but I want something a little bit more personal. That's that would be amazing, and it's it, it's enough of a motivator to like go in there like one day and see that. Okay, I was ranked last time I played with with the score I put up. I got ranked six thousand, blah 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 blah, out of like ninety thousand people. Yeah. But the, then, and then like the next day, go back and say, "Oh shit, my rank fell." Somebody, enough people have beaten that score to push me into the seven thousand person bra- bracket. Okay, I'm gonna try to get back up into there as f- far as I can. So, I, I think the 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 best thing I've thought about that game is when you compare it to the first one. The first one, you're Pac-Man and you are trying to stay alive as long as you can, knowing that you're going to die at some point. And mm-hmm. this takes the same basic play and empowers Pac-Man to where you're like, "Fuck you, ghosts!" <laughs> like <laughs> you're, you know, and you you don't feel like you're just running all the time. You you, it feels like you are a badass, and that yeah. sounds so stupid to say about Pac-Man, but <laughs> well, the, well, one of the problems with Pac-Man, and I was a longtime Pac-Man player as a kid because i'm a nerd like that ms pac-man the best but the 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 problem with that game is that you're always i don't know it's so easy to die and so there is no oh shit button no. so it sounds sounds like the the bombs themselves would just be yeah empowering just like you said yep yep and so, just wait. and having that having that slow-mo on there so that like if you're going to try to go around this corner to get away from it and you know it's going to be close going into that like pac-man bullet time allows you to kind of say I think I can actually make still make yeah. this corner in time. I can pull this off. Yeah. Without that bowl time, that game would be fucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh like, God, because it gets fucking fast. Yeah. It gets really. Damn yeah. It, fast. Gets, it gets progressively fast it, it, as you're going, and you're whether you're doing a time trial or whatever. So it's not and like when you do when you do hit a bomb, it actually slows you down too. Yeah. Yeah. It takes kind of it kind of sets you back. And you and you said there was like a five minute time thing. Do you do you there's die? Di- there's, do you have like, Lives? There's different modes. You have different lot. You have lives for the time modes, and there's also different. There's like a, I'm there like ten minute ones too. There's a five minute mode, a ten minute mode, and there's like the time trials. And there's also a ghost attack one, which is just trying to see how many ghosts you can eat in one run. Oh wow! And that's the one where I got like ninety three or ninety four in a row, and that's why I knew. Uh, yeah, I can. I got that many behind me to eat. So. Good luck. You must have come in your pants like three times. <laughs> that was great. It took forever. Yeah, it's just. It's. It is. It's fucking bliss that's great um best best days of your life (laughs) yeah but uh other (laughs) let me keep moving here uh other than pac-man uh viva fucking pinata oh god i went out and picked up i had heard like great things about the game and it looked like something that my daughter would get a kick out of so i downloaded the trial of it and played it and if anybody's actually interested in checking it out i do recommend checking out the trial but you'll get a little bit sad uh, when you find out that you can play the trial like as long as you want, they they will not stop you playing the trial, but you won't be able to save your game. Ah, yeah, that's what kind of sucks is that I was like I was digging the game and then I finally figured out, hmm, I wonder when I how I can save this game and I didn't see any options and I went online and looked. I was like, oh, you can't save on the trial. God damn it! I I missed that part when it popped up in the beginning of the game. So oh no. So, but anyways, I it was like I went and picked it up at GameStop used for like ten bucks, and I was like, sweet. I got it home. Daughter thinks it's the the coolest thing. It is fun as shit. It's yeah, just, it's that game is like crack. I'm not it, allowed to play anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of um, Harvest Moon in some degree, but okay. it's very condensed. It's very like everything happens right here. In Harvest Moon, you had to move all over the place to get all the stuff. Yeah. to do little mini quests and to um, uh, get all the tools you would need to ra- run your farm. This one, it's like everything is right there, 
and shit is happening all the time. It's like a very fast, not maybe to some degree, maybe not as complicated as Harvest Moon mm-hmm. and not as like detailed in depth, but it's it's very condensed. It's it's a lot better for maybe younger kids, but it's still for for me as an adult, I couldn't put it down. Like the, for the night that I was playing the trial of it, I'm sitting there trying it out. My daughter was digging it, and I'm playing it like an hour or so later my wife finally goes uh you know you're she's not watching you anymore right (laughs) well it's the thing about viva pinata is that the the next unlockable or the next pinata that you know to get into your garden is just it's like it's right there you know so they have the carrot just just right in front of your face and they're like oh just play a little bit longer and you'll get that galagoo or you know whatever the fuck it is so that, that the game is fantastic and it looks gorgeous too. It is. It does. It looks great. And that game came out in like '06, I think. And it yeah, still it's looks old. fantastic. Mm-hmm. Well, rare, the, the art, rare, rare in their art style, and they're just insane with that stuff. Same with uh, Banjo Kazooie, Nuts and Bolts. Like, it, just the way, what they did with those art styles make them very, very timeless. Yeah, I, I have not played the banjo yet, so uh, oh. might be another one I have to check out. So it's many very fucking different. games I need to pick up on this. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. all of a sudden got a huge backlog of shit. I know. Yeah, man, it's like where have I been? It's one of these things like I, I never like was one to like I I always had kind of like eh I don't really need a 360 because there's there's not a lot of shit on it that I like primary games on the console there's not a lot of stuff that I want but now that I have one it's just like kind of like I wear why did I not get one yeah Yeah. I still I still tend to prefer a lot of the stuff that came out on the PS3 I don't think I made a bad choice in that in that regard but there's a lot of these other games that I'm now being able to pick up so cheap that I'm really enjoying it I I don't know it's it's been a lot of fun well, one th- I mean, yeah, you have a huge backlog, but looking forward, most of the exclusive shit looks most exciting on PS3. It does. I, I actually ran through of the stuff that I knew was going to be coming out this year, at least so far, and there's going to be surprises for sure, but I made a list of all the things that I'm I'm looking at buying, and I think there was only one game on there out of like at least a dozen that I was even considering getting on the 360. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty... pretty uh, going to be a good year for the ps3 though yeah that's why i love my ps3 it's my i i play i don't know i play random crap on my 360 but my main rig is my ps3 just because it has the it has awesome exclusives and stuff mm-hmm. that i want mine is too oh wait oh <laughs> mine's broken oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh jason <laughs> um but but real quick break these through i'm done with my uh what i've been playing uh since we did get the 360 it came with the connect so I oh, yeah. uh, came with Connect Adventures, and my uh, parents actually got uh, the Connectables game as well for because they figured that my daughter would like that, and she does. She thinks it's awesome. So what are your thoughts on the tech with it? Um, I'm not impressed so far, but I've the one game that everybody says proves it is Dance Central, and I've not played that. Yeah, I've, I've, I played Connect Adventures the night I got it, I think the next day, and I haven't played that game since. <laughs> yeah, I I... Yeah, we I I have played Connect Adventures probably three or four nights with my kids, at least my daughter. Uh, my son tries to play too, and it really has a hard time picking him up. Like, really has a hard time picking him up. Um, but he is pretty young for games, so he's only he just turned three a few days ago, so or about a week ago. Um, but it doesn't have that bad of a time picking me and my daughter up, and it's fun. Like I've had fun with it, and my daughter gets a big kick out of the Connectable stuff, but like just the times that I've played just the connector adventure stuff at least um it just has like this layer of kind of jank doesn't quite work <laughs> I I don't know like it doesn't it doesn't work as smooth as what I had envisioned it to mm-hmm. um but like I said I think the like the, the one game everybody says that proves it is the one I have not played so I can I can't really discount it yet I I want to see the next round of connect games <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I have both. Uh, I have Dance Central, and yeah, it works really well. Does it? Yeah, I mean, but... But it's the not one... a game that you go, ooh, I'm going to go home and play Dance Central. Yeah, I, it's one I got because I know Shannon wanted it, and I kind of wanted it, but it's not one we play a whole lot, just because, I mean, not, it's more of a party game. How often are you just right. going to I'm going to go home and play some Dance Central. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
It's sad oh, that yeah. the tech is only demonstrated really well on one game too. Mm-hmm. I, I personally, I think Connect Sports works really well, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm just weird that way or not. But yeah, maybe that's another one. Like I want to check that out, but I, I'd rather wait until that gets cheap. Well, I mean, you've played other. You have sports champions and things. I don't blame you for wanting to save your money for some to put right. to something else. Mm-hmm. Um, and the last thing that I, uh, I did get a few games via the Steam sale. Um, like one that I got that I'm not going to spend much time on is um, I got Railworks 2. It's a train <laughs> simulator. Oh, how is that? <laughs> I saw you tweet that? that. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. I, I've it's been, good. I, I run a fan blog for that. <laughs> <laughs> ah. No, uh, I, actually, that's a game I would totally play. It was super cheap on Steam. It was six bucks, and my son is a f- fanatic about trains. Even at three, he fucking loves trains. He thinks they're the coolest things. Um, so I got it. Okay, maybe something I can sit down and play with him. And like the first night that I got it, we sat there for at least probably probably about an hour, and that's like the most still I have ever seen that boy sit. <laughs> uh, and he really dug it. He probably totally forgot that I even have it at this point because I have been playing so many other things, but um, yeah, he it's really good. It's really good, but it is a fucking simulator, so there's it's kind of slow. It is like a calming game. It is like you sit there and play that. It is it will kind of just mellow you out. It'll either stress you out at certain times because you're trying to uh, hitch up with other like cars and stuff, or it will just fucking mellow you out because it's it's pretty relaxing. But yeah, it's people good. are saying that it felt like it was kind of like on rails. You know? ah! Damn it, Dean. Yeah. But um, uh, but um, um, but yeah, I got, I did get Misadventures of PB Winterbottom. Ooh, played, wow. played a little that bit of that. That was forty nine cents, wasn't it? Something like yes. that. Yes, I yeah, didn't somebody... pick it up. I'm such a dick. <laughs> yeah, you, you are an idiot. That's a great game for forty nine cents. <laughs> God damn it. It seems really good so far. I need to get back and play it, but yeah, other games are taking my uh, taking my time up. Uh, Poker Night at the Inventory, I got. That's not bad. That's a poker game. Yeah, it's a poker game. I mean, yeah. for what it is, it's whatever. It's five bucks or whatever on sale. Um, Rare was in the giving mood and sent me uh, the updated, or the, excuse me, the latest expansion for the Magic: The Gathering game. Thanks, Rare. Uh, but I haven't got it, had a chance to go back and play that. <laughs> um, and the last thing that I've been playing, which was kind of the one I figured might want to talk about the more, the most, but maybe not. Uh, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Brotherhood. <laughs> Brotherhood. Yeah. Brother. It, wow. I haven't yeah. beat it yet. Neither have I, of course, because I, I was, just got I was it. But barreling hardcore into it up until holidays, and I kind of was counting on holidays because I was enjoying the game so much that I didn't want to finish it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, if that makes sense, I kind of wanted to. Oh yeah. Leave yeah. it for a little bit later and then dive back into it. But uh, what are your thoughts then? Wow, yeah. that's fucking amazing. Isn't that's it? Is great. it? Great. It's. It, isn't it crazy? The crazy part about that game is it's not that much different than AC2, but it seems so much better. Mm-hmm. It seems so much better because it's like, I was thinking about it last night, it's like they took AC2. It's like, you can't appreciate this game, I don't think, unless you've played Assassin's Creed 2. So it's not like you can just jump into this and like immediately go, oh wow, this game is amazing. You kind of had to have played Assassin's Creed 2 to, to get the appreciation, but who wouldn't have played that before playing this, I guess? Yeah. Um, but it's like they took EC2 and then just added, like, more layers to the cake. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's like there's all the stuff that's that was already there, and then, the, okay, we're going to also add this stuff, and then will also add this stuff. And I think my analogy for it is, like, it's like bumper bowling. It's like you can throw the ball down there and you can hit whatever you want, but you're never really going to go off that path. There's always, like, wherever you go down that path, there's going to be something that's going to be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't introduce anything... They they didn't introduce anything crappy, which is, like, unheard of. Right. It's yeah. just well, ref- refinements, improvements. It just... Uh, I want to go back and play that game. God damn it. I... I it almost seems like overload at some points, but it's not mm-hmm. like it's not like there's I mean, there's the story stuff that's there, and you can just complete that if you want, and all this other stuff is just icing. It's just great, and it's like I like the assassin, the uh, brother, the 
yeah, the the actual guild assassins guild stuff of mm-hmm. getting the other members. And oh, I, I am I, I'm obsessing about that stuff. It is. <laughs> I ju- you know what? I had actually just got that stuff opened yesterday and was like, oh my god, I can like send these people off and I can get them experience and I can like. Love I'm gonna them. send oh them god. off and I'm gonna go do laundry and come back. And <laughs> it's it's great. It's Just so some ad- some advice about your assassins. Um, not only can you go to the pigeon coops, but you can also go to defeated Borgia towers to actually access them. Oh, nice, cool. Yeah. yeah, and one of the other things that I, I guess some people saying wasn't particularly clear is it was to me, but some people said they didn't realize this because they don't tell you this in the game is that you can send multiple assassins on missions. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Which I guess some people weren't figuring out. Yeah, because there was actually a uh, mission that was like a... I had just got it, and I noticed that there was like a three-star, and I sent like two or three of my... I think three assassins, because you can see what like percentage yeah. of uh, chance that it thinks they'll be able to complete it. So I added like three to it, so it was like 100%, and they all got like more experience, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but yeah, that's fucking fantastic, and uh, I know, like, Dean, weren't you saying you weren't too thrilled with the Borgia Tower stuff? <laughs> I love the Borgia Tower stuff. Okay. My yeah, no, my only issue was the fact that the it, once you have high level assassins, it just makes it very easy to win. Okay, maybe that's what it was. Um, yeah, I thought I'd heard somebody said that they didn't like the Borgia Tower stuff, but um, and I, might have I might have been it. in the beginning. I was having I I think I said that because I was having I don't know if it was on a podcast or not, but I was I, I realized in the I played that game and I didn't. I was going to the Borgia Towers right away. Me and too. I hadn't done a lot of story stuff. Me too. <laughs> and and I, I like. I think I was in a place where I wasn't supposed to be, and I didn't realize the difficulty was super high. Yeah, yeah. It's I like, know exactly where not, you're talking about. Not that I didn't enjoy it, but I I I don't want to say I played it wrong, but. I was doing that. I was going through like all the Borgia Tower stuff, and I was like buying. What was hilarious is like two nights ago, I was like I'd been buying up all these buildings because you can pick up like the blacksmiths and the artisans mm-hmm. and like basically renovate Rome and buy up all this stuff. And I was making all this money and buying all this stuff up. And then I think I had had. I think at this point I had had at least a few of the types, like the maybe the the tailors and the. Uh, banks and the blacksmiths. I had had at least half of them bought, and, it slows and then I down. went. And then, well, the funny thing is, I went. I had like at least half of them bought, and I noticed the blacksmiths weren't allowing me to buy like any newer stuff. I'm like, okay, I don't get it. And then I finally went into my next story part, and it, go, it goes through this whole spiel and the cinematics. And then on my way out, it says talk to the architect. So I go talk to him, and he explains to me like everything I had just been doing. <laughs> Yeah, that happened like, to me too. I was like, oh, I guess I wasn't supposed to have done all that shit yet, but oh well. It, but, it's so hard not to, though. I mean, they just they lay it out there for you, and if you're mm-hmm. the type of person who kind of likes that freeform gaming, you're you're gonna go do it. Yeah, I've just been running around doing shit. The only thing I haven't done so far is the uh, the cult of Romulus stuff. Um, I haven't really delved into that too much yet. Like, do I, is that basically like the? It's like the assassins' tombs. Yeah, is that basically Although, what that is? The the coolest thing about the cult of, of Romulus is that those those tombs not only is it excellent platforming and, yes and, they're great and, and like it's it's improved over to substantially and I'm a, I I love puzzle platforming and it's those were those were really some of my favorite parts in the game but not only do they have these awesome platforming sections and and just this these really cool little, little quests inside but um, there's also an ongoing storyline that matters. So yeah. you by doing those, you're actually getting a whole lot more story and another side of the Borgia that you wouldn't see if you didn't do it. So there's a lot of motivation to actually go through those. They're they're fucking awesome. Yeah, cool. Because um, I'd only done that first one. I will say though, because in the first Cult of Romulus place that you go into, uh, from that point, I kind of noticed some of like the hundred percent sink stuff oh, is geez. fucking hard. That's what that's what I said yeah. when we talked about it before and. Finally, I didn't like, yeah, you have, my, God. my one complaint with it initially was it made me play a way that maybe I wouldn't necessarily play, and that felt kind of weird for a quote-unquote open-world type game. I agree. Mm-hmm. That was the first one that I noticed that, because it was the, uh, you have to com- go through it in under eight minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I was like, man, I would have really been rushing my ass off to do that in under eight minutes. And yeah. I, well, like, I, I don't want to play it like that. When it started to beep, like, 
oh, I, maybe I just missed it. Like, nope, I doubled that time getting through this. But yeah, you have, just, you have, to, you have to at some point just not care about that. Cause yeah. There, there are certain missions where I have kind of cared about it because I go through it and I fuck up by doing something stupid. And I go, okay, this was a quick enough mission. I'll go back and I'll 100% it real quick. But then there's other times where I fuck up and I just go, yeah, there's no way I'm going to go back through and do that. No. The worst the worst part is that if you do, if you don't get the secondary objective and you don't get the 100% sync, it just says failed sync 50%. Oh, I'm like, no. why you can't loser! It, yeah, why can't it be like 95? Why can't it be just like a 5%? No, it's got to be 50%, you fail. It just, and, your, and your mom doesn't love you. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, that's how it made me feel. I don't know. Assassin's yeah. Creed's like, shut up, you, you're not good enough. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's a fantastic game though. I mean that yeah. that minor quip aside, it's fantastic. I am loving it. That's all I've been playing, um, and it shows because I did actually sign up on Raptor finally. I'm very late to that game, and uh, like today's that popped up for me to show like what games I've been playing the last 24 hours. That was it. Uh, and like in comparison to uh, last Monday, I had uh, or excuse me, this last Monday I had the day off. Um, from work, and th- the raptor for that night said that I had played uh, like two games, like Assassin's Creed, Pac-Man, and five other games in yeah. the last 24 hours. I was I like, had, holy I had, shit! I had to do that to me a couple of times over break. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of like, oh, uh, like, that God, was a I'm, good. That I'm was a good por- day. I'm borderline insane right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I need to reevaluate my my gaming type here. <laughs> have, have you done any of the multiplayer, Steve? I have not. Um, I I thought about booting that up last night because I I remember enjoying it uh, when I was at your place, but I I think I want to wait. I want to get through the game. I'm not too far. I've been playing a little bit, but I'm still pretty low level. Okay, I might try it out like when I get some free time, but I think I just kind of want to wait. But it's it is really good. But yeah. yeah. Um. But so yeah, that's the uh, we're gonna call that the show this week. Next week we are going to go over what we're looking forward to in 2011. Uh, I we hope that you download and listen to us again. Well, gentlemen, no point in hanging around this dump any longer. Wait, where are you going? I was gonna make espresso. Show's over, folks. You can't go. All the plants are gonna die. Take off, eh? Thanks for listening to Multiplaying, the companion podcast of Multiplaying.net. Questions, comments, feedback, errors, etc. can be sent to multiplaying at gmail.com. We invite you to write a review on iTunes and visit our website at www.multiplying.net. We've made a lot of friends, shared a lot of laughs, often at the expense of others. I think some people are going to be upset. Let me just close this conversation by saying you are one unique individual. Thank you and good night.